Mind you, I have about 10 years on this game. So I've been literally playing this game on and off for over a decade. So I kind of play it a little bit differently than a lot of other people who maybe would. Play some Xanima, dude. Fuck it. We got our manager character here. So once you make your first guy, he's pretty important because if he dies, like you lose your character for good. Your whole save is gone. But we can actually have uh, hirelings or recruits. The difference between hirelings and recruits is uh, those that you hire are NPCs. They're AI that are controlled by the game and recruits are people that you will play as. Go ahead and get another recruit here. Name him after myself. We got a merchant and a physician right away, which is good. Good. I should get the trainer, I guess. They can only teach the uh, skills they have. I think we can actually take the trainers out in battle and teach them skills and they'll learn the rest of them. Two gold, though. I'm not sure if I can actually afford that right now. Yeah, we can't. So the combat in this game is pretty interesting. It's a combination of footwork and mouse inputs. And then inputs um, that you can, you know, rebind if you want to for different attacks, like overheads and, uh, and stabs. The combat in this game is really hard to learn because it's really unintuitive. But in a way, that's actually a good thing because it makes the skill ceiling really high in this game. And it's, uh, it's a really interesting type of combat to try and learn, especially when you take your time and you're, you're not really spamming the controls because this game's combat looks really weird. When you're really spamming commands and controls, you're not following the rhythm and the pace of the game. Because there's a certain pace that the game goes at that you have to try and follow. And if you can, like, match that rhythm, you'll actually have these really cool fights that actually pace out really good. Mind you, I have about 10 years on this game. So I've been literally playing this game on and off for over a decade. So I kind of play it a little bit differently than a lot of other people who maybe would. And I try and get it to the point where I want the fights to look like fights as much as they can. And I don't try and use too many, uh, I guess you could say exploits within the physics of the game. Because you can do some really wacky shit to uh, like throw people around and stuff. So I try and, uh, no, no pun intended, I try and keep it really clean when I play this. <laughs> this game is also one of like the most hardcore roguelites you'll ever play as well. And a lot of that has to do because of the skill ceiling. There's a lot of mechanics that I'll kind of break down more as I play here. You can kind of see you can do different combos at different directions, at different heights. We can hit them in the face, we can hit them in the leg. We can break through their parries depending on the angle of the strike. Timing your parries is all automated and it, all it comes down to is knowing the rhythm of the game and knowing when to make your decision. The weird way in which I could describe this game's combat is you are a puppet master and you are controlling and pulling the strings. Can you gamble and examine um, you can actually, yes. Uh, and the timings matter and different weapons and stuff, but initiative in this game is kind of weird because there are skills and mechanics that kind of dictate your engagements between different characters and NPCs. Going for a couple more inept duels and then end the day out. So the crosshair that you're seeing on the screen is controlled by my mouse. But when you're playing the game, one thing you have to understand is your character kind of has a mind of its own. Like I said, you're a puppet master. Like you're pulling the strings, but... You know, the puppet still has like some kind of like sentience and things about itself that even you as the player controller, like you are controlling the entity in the game, it still kind of has things that it will do on its own, almost like an AI. And that mostly has to do with like the like mass and movement of your character and the way he steps and moves around. It's all calculated. And right now the opponents we're fighting aren't uh, super skilled. In other words, they are actually lacking skills and abilities that are essentially new mechanics with fighting in this game. So for example, you can unlock repost, you can unlock feints, you can unlock a remise, which is basically a combo left to right attack. So now Stefan leveled up here, so we're gonna go manage him. And then we're gonna select his next skill that he'll unlock. The first one I always get is repost because it's just the most simple thing that you should have. And basically, 
what Repos does is when you successfully land a parry, so your character actually has to parry an attack and there has to be a connection from your opponent to your weapon or whatever you're blocking with, then you have an increased initiative to have a quicker attack speed in order to retaliate, just like most melee slashers. The next one we're going to get is Fend. This one's incredibly useful. This is basically uh, a late parry. So if you're in the middle of an attack or you're swinging, you can then let go of that attack by let, let going of left click, and then your character will automatically parry, assuming you're following the rhythms of the initiative within the game's combat. And again, that is a rhythm that you eventually kind of have to learn. That just is what it is. So there was a, there was a repost, right? To instantly, as soon as I you hear the thunk of the, the parry, then you can just init initially counterattack, and it has a lot more energy behind it. Because the way the combat works in this game is all physics and motion. It's all, like, it's really intricate. And again, you, you have to take some time to really wrap your head around it to really understand the fundamentals to get actually good. Because once you get good and you're controlling the character the way you want to, you actually start doing really cool shit. And the AI are not to fuck around either. They, they, will, they will start to get the upper hand on you sometimes, so you have to be careful. The AI, a lot of the time, will play the game better than the player. A good rule of thumb when you're playing this game is always keep your crosshair on your opponent. And try and keep your crosshair at a distance that you know your weapon's reach is at. So when you're trying to target something, it's best to not be on the edge of the screen and going like this in these big motions. Try and keep your crosshair on the target and always bring it back to the target whenever you're attacking. Because when you drag on the left side of your screen, you're going to you know, obviously do a left side attack. Drag on the right side, you're going to go on the right side. And so it's important to be able to pull in between where those attacks are going really easily and you don't lose focus on your pairing because if your crosshair isn't facing your opponent you're not going to parry correctly and that's when you get hit so a lot of the initiative in this game is bringing your character back to focus in order to get a proper parry off however you can have an unsu unsuccessful parry if your footwork's off and you're doing uh maybe timing or distancing is off for whatever reason like i said there's a lot of intricacies that go into this game's combat a lot of small like nuances that paint the bigger picture Right now, just in terms of our character's skill and our abilities, we're at like the very basic minimum right now of what we can essentially do, but which is still a lot. Once you get the skills and abilities, they just kind of give you a little bit more tools. For me, I think this game is going to become incredibly popular whenever multiplayer comes out. That is something that the developers want to do one day. But at the same time, Xanima doesn't need to be massively popular because the developer is in a way, making this game for pretty selfish reasons. Like, he's not worried about making a ton of money by making this. He's worried about making a game that he wants to play himself and have a lot of fun with. It's something that has been an idea of his for, like, over two decades. Whereas a lot of developers will typically make games with just the intent of running a business and making money, not necessarily creating this really cool experience. This guy is just like, he just wants to make this crazy fucking game that has never been made before. It has mechanics and things implemented that have never been done before, which he has already achieved. This game is able to essentially do things that I've never seen in any other game, period. Some things may be similar like lore, universe, fantasy setting, medieval setting, whatever. But the things, the bones in this game are completely unique. Nobody has been able to make anything really even fucking close to what Maddox has made. And that's what makes Xanima a very special game. It's a really true passion project. And it's gonna be so much bigger than what it is. And mind you, from what you guys have seen so far, all we've been playing is the roguelike mode for the game. This isn't even the main part of the gameplay loop. This is just a side mode in order to have a fun, interesting way to test out the game's melee combat system. So that way you're not just doing the same sequences over and over. You're actually playing this like this mini game mode in order to make your feedback for the game's combat more interesting and fun. The story mode for this game is fantastic. Like it's 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 so much better than what we're playing right now. Like don't get me wrong, like this is a lot of fun. I love the arena mode. But the story mode is is really where it's at. Really looking forward to doing a new playthrough with a new force coming out. This game should be having a really big update coming out sometime soon. They're just kind of wrapping up a lot of the uh the new levels and like primary content. Arena is definitely where the new player experience should begin. Because if you don't understand the game's combat mechanics, you're not going to be able to really do anything. You're just going to get wrecked. Yeah, the higher level fights, again, we're still on the inept. We're using, like, very basic weapons and equipment. 
once we start getting the more spicy armor like you can literally become a full clad like knight in this using halberd poleaxe stuff like that this is like the very beginning of a playthrough so arena can be a lot more exciting and then you eventually can take part in uh the tournaments and these give you some crazy cool rewards like usually the best weapons and armor in the game highest class that you can get so this game uses a procedural generation system with the weapons and armor and what that means is that every single weapon is unique every single one i'm not fucking joking like i'm not talking like borderlands procedural generation where it's like maybe a couple hundred different assets and a random combination of each other like this game literally has procedural textures and generations for the shapes and weight and size of everything on a weapon so there's two categories you have exceptionally well made so this is like the craftsmanship of of the item in flawless condition and this is the condition of the item so the amount of soot and smear or rust that will be on the weapon so for example this is a um horse budgel in great condition so it's like pretty shittily made but you know it's in good shape this axe is fairly well made in extremely good condition which is pretty high tier at least in terms of the condition well made very good condition this is also another good weapon you can kind of tell how good a weapon is based on how much the metal shines in the sprite that you uh, see so the brighter it is usually that's a good indication that's a higher quality item so here is a well-made short sword in somewhat worn condition so you can kind of see the blade looks like it's been beat up a little bit been used tattered down same thing goes for clothes and it's all procedural like every texture is procedurally generated every single one is unique in its own way but follow a certain set of rules that are essentially materials so you have like leather cloth um silk wool you have different types of metals, types of like metal, brass, copper. Eventually, they're going to add different materials like ivory and bone and other types of procedural generation materials into the weapons and armor, which will add a whole nother layer to how things can generate. And then there'll be designs. So there's a lot of really cool stuff to look forward to in the future of Xanima, even though this game has so much shit in it. It's so fleshed out and so high quality made that it really puts a, a lot of other games and developers to shame that have like millions and tens of millions of dollars in backing and capital where this guy has managed to do all of this just like in his free time out of his house or wherever he's been living the past couple years so we're gonna go ahead and get some new skills and abilities here clean up his inventory a little bit smooth things around defend let's see what specials we got a brawl well we'll do a brawl Brawl's a safe, uh, safe bout. Basically, hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's a little janky, but it can be pretty fun. It has a charm to it. If you kind of learn how to punch. You basically have to think of an X in front of your character. So he's not going to punch directly straight off his shoulder. He's going to kind of cross and use his hips a little bit. And so usually, if I want to hit this guy with my right arm, I ha he needs to be to my front left a little bit. Then you can throw an uppercut in there every now and again. Those can do some nice little finishers. Punch him in the titty, you know what I mean? Damn it, we lost. Fucking stepped on my toe, damn it. When I play, I try and make it look as cinematic as I can, too. Try and utilize the full functions of the game. And Because, again, you can make this game look really fucking bad and jank, and the combat looks awful if you don't know how to play right. And you input too much. Less is more in Xanima, especially when it comes to, like, manipulating the combat. Once you get in 1vx situations... There's a little bit different movements and rhythms that you have to kind of follow, but... Show some jank. <laughs> kind of just like wiggling around, like just it's just really excessive movement and, and button mashing of the, the, the footsteps is is really the only thing that makes it look really weird. So once you start like really fucking button mashing your movement and moving your mouse around a ton, it's just that's when the game gets strange. 
But again, once you play it at a certain rhythm, because that's how you're supposed to play this game, it has a certain pace. It's like back and forth, back and forth. And there's certain things that kind of gain and take initiative in engagements, which is like feints, reposts. Like there's so many like little things that kind of add up together that make up this game's combat. Yeah, it's single player for now, but eventually multiplayer will become a thing in like lower ping environments. The dev thinks that he can manage to get it around like if you have like 30 ping or so, you can still play it normally and not really experience like many or much latency issues at all. And like knowing him, like I, I kind of credit this guy as like a fucking genius developer. I think that he can, you know, achieve that with whatever way he can figure out how to network. The blue meter is your focus bard, so that's for a story portion of the game's content, which is called Thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy is a term um, not really used anymore, but it basically is like old school, like magic, like OG magic, before like people would call things magic magic, you know what I mean? That's kind of like the concept. Um, and what that does is your focus allows you to cast certain Thaum abilities, and there's different trees. There's five trees in total. The one that we have currently in the game that you can play right now in the public branch on Steam is Mind Thaumaturgy, which is kind of like, think Jedi mind powers, like make people like you or hate you or hate each other, right? You know, fake fuck with like people's emotions and like a bit of necromancy. And that's basically what uh, mind, mind Thaumaturgy is as like a, a magic school or a Thaum, Thaum school. The next one that's gonna be in the next update here, maybe in the next couple of weeks or so, if we're lucky, is the Force Thaumaturgy, which is like force shields, force blocking, movement, gravity attacks, projectiles, super fucking cool like uh, it's gonna be fucking rad i can't wait to play it i can't wait to show you guys because i've already seen some leaks internally and bro that shit looks awesome can't wait to show you guys so just to, as a reminder we're playing the roguelike side mode of exanima which is a rpg arena roguelike side mode secondary mode the main game is a hardcore dungeon crawler rpg with a exploration based story driven narrative so you have to read things, you have to read, find items, look at things in the environment to figure out the lore and the story of what's going on. There's also some NPCs that you can talk and interact with and have dialogue with as well. How long does it take to get mediocre at the combat? Um, I would say maybe 12 hours. Because for me, I think like if you can play Xanima straight for 8 to 12 hours, that means that like, you're willing to like learn and you'll have like a decent understanding of the game's combat. I'll actually go show you basically the hardest thing for new Xanima players to learn. And you can practice this wherever you want. So if you, you know, come over here on your new arena playthrough as your manager, you can kind of work stuff out in the training room here. So first things first, uh, just knowing the controls. Once you know the, know the controls, you understand like the different stances. So the passive stance, combat stance, right? See the crosshair change, the stance of the character changes. So there's also uh, camera controls as well. And when you press V, it recenters your crosshair, or excuse me, your camera to wherever your mouse is or your crosshair is. A lot of people will do this when they're fighting in certain directions. However, this is the hardest thing for players to learn in Xanima is how to move around an opponent while keeping the crosshair on the, the opponent and also not having to constantly switch the camera this way. Knowing how to play your opponent and play the game without constantly having to move the camera around is a massive advantage in being good at this game. If you're constantly having to do this and you're slightly off angle now and you can't figure out what way you want to uh, basically attack and you have to switch your camera again, you are playing the game, at least in my opinion, incorrectly and that is a crutch. And it's gonna, it's gonna hinder your ability to be good at Xanima. Because once you can learn how to properly move around and space your opponent, um, without needing to recenter your camera, it's gonna give you a really big advantage. And footwork is literally the foundation of being a good player. So it's just managing the crosshair, managing your footwork and managing the camera. Sometimes like depending on your situation, like yeah, switching to this is fine if you have the time to do it. And like, you know, you feel like maybe you just went into like a, a new uh, like doorway or something like, yeah, you're right here and you wanna like maybe square up, like go ahead, by all means, use the feature. That's what it's there for, but excessive switching of the camera towards your crosshair is going to get you fucked up so basic thing to do is to look at this dummy and then just walk around it that's it and just like go where you kind of want to go and practice you know your movement and just like gauge how you move left and right and what the difference between like steps and dashes are 
Because what I'm doing right here is like, you don't want to do this. This is when you're just like holding WASD. You're, you don't hold W to move forward. That's not what you want to do, right? When you're in the combat stance, you want to make sure you know the differences between steps and dashes. Notice the dash? It's just, it's just more movement. Step, dash. There's a difference. Dash, step. Dash, step. Step, step. Notice the footwork. Notice how he takes more steps on a dash because it's a larger movement. So not button smashing is really important to make sure that your footwork is clean and precise. So getting in the rhythm of step, 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 dash, step, dash, dash, step, step, and try and be independent on your direction. You can also go like forward, right, or forward, left. It's a little finicky sometimes, but you can kind of go at these like angular movements if you want to. It just takes a little bit of practice. They can be a little weird, but usually you can do that just on your crosshair. Another thing is called driving. Driving is basically keeping your character going into a direction based on your movement. So if my crosshair is here and I constantly keep holding E, I'm going to move in this direction. And then I'll move forward in that direction. Then I'll move left in that direction or back from that direction. And so driving your character is important. So like, say, for example, I have an enemy in front of me and I'm going backwards, right? And there's another enemy over here on my left about to attack me. All I can do, I'm backing up on the wall. Instead of getting squished, I just turn my mouse. Now I'm switching and moving the direction of my character. I'm driving him away in a different direction without actually having to go, say, back all the way to the wall like this and then go right. You understand? So instead of having to have excessive inputting with changing directions, all you have to do is keep your input in one direction then just move your mouse. And then that will change the way that you want to go. Again, footwork. It's it's really weird. It's it's not like any other games. But once you kind of can understand those basics of movement, the game would come a lot easier to learn and a lot easier to play. Then of course it's just learning your attacks, different directions. Right? You have right attack, you have left attack, you have overhead, and then you have stab. Stabbing is when you can actually really use your crosshair to aim. So if I aim at the bottom, notice how he aims towards the bottom of the uh, the dummy. I aim more towards his head. He's going to aim at the head. I aim at the torso. He's going to aim at the torso. That is something that you can utilize with stabs to be very precise. You can even stab like kind of low at your feet as well. And then there's crouching. Which is done by X. So he's kind of doing like a duck, right? This can be used in a variety of ways. The most common way is when you do an overhead attack. You can time it with the crouch to do more damage. This puts more gravity and motion down on your vertical swing and can be really good at finishing opponents on the ground. Next, with crouching, you can actually change the direction of your horizontal swing. So instead of going directly to the head, you then crouch with the attack to then go to the legs, hips, or maybe even the stomach. Understanding the basic attack directions is really important. And there's something that I think that is useful, uh, which is basically a theory called zoning. Imagine that you have like this cone in front of you, right? And then you want to keep your mouse within that certain zone of your opponent. So if I want to attack from my left side, I, I zone out properly and I, I aggressively keep my mouse close enough to my target in order to properly change attack directions and get back to them to parry on time. So that's really, really important. You got to maintain this specific zone of going on each side so that, again, you can control what attack direction you have and so that you can get your crosshair back to your opponent quick enough to parry. Because if you don't have focus on your character, if you're not pointing your crosshair at your enemy and you're looking off to the side, that's when you're not going to be able to parry correctly and that's when you'll take damage. So those are really all the basics. Once you kind of get into more advanced stuff, you start to play with uh, like footwork and attacks, either by say like stepping with your attack or stepping in an opposite direction of your attack in order to change the angle. Uh, Footworking is really, really important for the game's melee overall. So getting a good, comf comfortable feel with that's really, really useful. They eventually want to do dismemberment and stuff like that. It's just not really a priority for them. But they do want to have some more like gruesome finishes and kind of excessive, uh, you know, gore and whatnot eventually. Potentially like deforming of characters and like maybe snapping bones and whatever. But it could have some potential cool stuff. No, man, this game also hasn't been abandoned, by the way. It's still very much in development. It's uh, It hasn't stopped at all. They literally have a dev diary on what they've been working on every Monday, every week. And there hasn't been 
a Monday in, I want to say, over 10 years that they haven't released a dev diary explaining what they've worked on that past week. Some are less exciting than others, but they, they're constantly working on this game, and, like, this game is the furthest thing from being dead. <laughs>